Hello and welcome to a short talk about artificial intelligence enhancing a CFD's NOTI position approach for the use in infrastructure management, maintenance and virtual reality. I am Werner Toplek and this is a co-work with Markus Trenka. First of all I will give you a brief history of our two companies. I will have some words for computational fluid dynamics and a related CFD's node deposition approach. I will talk about nonlinear pattern databases um, with simulation data. Um, I will talk about artificial neural networks for classification. I will show you a virtual scenario at Calgary Airport in Canada. And at last I will give you some application areas and I will give you an outlook um, for the next two or three years. The top lab, top lab laboratory was founded in 2011 and I'm specializing on artificial intelligence and data driven modeling for interdisciplinary problems found in techniques, economics and IT. Um, another word um, is cybernetics. Uh, Markus Trenka founded uh, his company Flow Dynamics in 2010 and he's a specialist in computational fluid dynamics and was awarded with the CFD user of the year 2005 given by Fluent. Um, the computational flu fluid dynamics uh, relying um, beyond this word work um, is years ago um, at the AIT, Austrian Institute of Technology, um, there were several projects and studies regarding snow. Um, here finite volume solvers uh, by Fluent have been used, so it's more or less state of the art in turbulence modeling. Um, we have customized boundary conditions for trapping and reflection of particles and this all is based on friction velocity. On the upper right you see um, an image of a highway model which um, has been investigated um, regarding planting of snow break woods or the building of snow fences to optimize um, deposition. Um, on the other side you see um, on the bottom a train, um, the bottom of the train um, where inlets for air and outlets have been investigated um, if they still work at um, temperatures below um, zero degrees with snow accretion. See here is then finally a snow deposition approach. Um, first attempts in the investigations have been made uh, by Bagnold in 1941. Sorensen developed this approach further and the team around uh, Marcus Trenka and Wolfgang Payer at the Austrian Institute of Technology made um, several studies as already shown and yeah it's about particle movement and this is a function of size, friction and impact angle. We see that um, light particles um, when exposed to, to wind will show suspension, they will fly away, they will leave the ground. Um, we see medium sized um, particles which will have some saltation behavior and um, large particles will show surface creep. So this is all about um, the snow. Of course there is cohesion which has uh, modeled by Marcus and this is uh, new to the state of the art as in common um, software packages. On the right you see um, a simulation area it's um, about 800 meters long um, and there's an obstacle in it it's, let's say it's a snow fence um, this area has been um, divided up in 250 stripes before and 500 stripes after the obstacle. We have some expansions um, the, so that the simulation can get in, in some sort of steady state before entering the measurement area. We have inlets and outlets where particles come in, masks can come in 
and um, where the wind is directed. So we see here on the left <coughs> um, this is the simulation area around the fence. Um, the fence has a height and we see that uh, X values after the fence have a positive value and before the fence have a negative value. We see the direction of wind and of course what's interesting here um, the simulation um, area has been divided up into 1.6 um, uh, million cells for each cell um, which length of 0.1 to 2 meters um, all physical um, differential equation systems have to be solved by the simulation and this is where um, um, long, long, long um, calculation and processing times occur. Um, 400 different configurations and scenarios have been um, simulated um, with this model. Um, we have different obstacle heights from 0 0.5 meter to 10 meter. Um, we have discrete steps of 0 0.5 meter. Um, we have the distance from the fence which has been measured um, with a discretization of 0 0.2 meters. And we have um, different wind speeds uh, starting from 10 km per hour to 200 km per hour and with a discrete step size of 10 km per hour. What we see here is a visualization of 2% of particles at a specific wind speed. We see here uh, clearly our nonlinear behavior before and after the, the obstacle. We see um, prim a primary vortex and some lateral vortices where we have turbulence in um, air stream. So we have here a model of uh, a nonlinear behavior, um, a mass of um, a deposition rate um, is here a function of wind speed, obstacle height and distance from the fence. So this is a nonlinear um, behavior we have to model somehow if we want to uh, provide data for um, in, in real time and if we want to to make some interpolation to data. Um, yeah and here it is um, we have data from about 400 simulations we have uh, all in all over 300,000 vectors um, consisting of a wind value, uh, obstacle height value, distance from, fan, from the obstacle um, value and a correlated um, mass deposition at this position. So what, what is the cons from this? Um, we have discrete parameter values. Um, in real world we wouldn't have um, winds uh, with step size um, 10 km per hour so we need a, a model um, which is able to, to interpolate um, between known, um, known simulation data. And this is, isn't so easy maybe. Um, we have about 600 um, known models <laughs> um, from statistics um, through, through all data-driven sciences um, coping with uncertainty and artificial neural networks as a connectionistic modeling approach and it's based on paradigms of neurophysiology. You know how our brain is built, we have some neurons inside, we have a structure of interconnections and we are able to realize, visualize and um, live um, in our physical reality. So this approach is um, some sort um, orientated on, on this biological behavior. We are building neural networks consisting of small processing elements. They are really, really simple. We have a quite good amount of them and we have an interconnection between it and so we can map nonlinear behavior. Um, we can use pattern recognition as an application. We can classify, we can cluster and we can predict high dimensional data. So what we see here is um, so two, two small examples. On the left we have a multi-layer perception, which is a feed-forward neural network. And on the right we have an example of a self-organizing map. 
This one is um, orientated on the um, paradigm of the neocortex. So we are mapping um, system states on, on a neural layer. There are several um, algorithms for training um, these models. We have here, as in any other um, approach here, um, uh, pros and cons. Um, the more data we have, the longer it takes the training. And it's a, a matter of a pattern selection um, to, to be able to recognize seldom um, occurrences of, of specific patterns. So, I did also some research um, based um, on my doctor thesis for data selection using nonlinear methods. I developed the ALEF methods, it's, just, it's about aspects of Lyapunov entropy and variance. Um, it's um, opposite to the common random data selection um, for neural network training. We are more clearly selecting patterns which are um, important for our model. You see here on the lower left it's the Lyapunov variance plane where each pattern has been um, transformed to. We see here an attractor um, of the nonlinear dynamics of the patterns we observe. On the right you see a 3D plot from it. You see that we have here um, a quite high amount of um, stable patterns with Lyapunov exponent around zero and almost a zero variance. And based on this um, I did some investigations as well for network optimization and training. Okay, so the nonlinear database has been modeled with a neural network and we want to make a, a virtual scenario of, of how our approach can be applied. So you see here a Google Earth um, satellite image, you see the Calgary airport. Um, here at the Red Cross is our road intersection we will investigate further. And we have here a neural network which predicts the mass deposition according to wind speed and distance from snow. So on the right we see here um, a white line which indicates a snow fence with height of one meter. What we see here, um, the white triangles um, they indicate trees which have been identified by um, the satellite image. Um, they have been estimated with um, varying height. And all in all, um, this data gets further um, processed. Um, we used several wind speeds. Um, and here on the left you see an example where we have green um, indication, yellow, red. This means these are areas with um, deposition and the, the, the blue ones show areas with um, um, negative deposition here. We can make an overlay at the intersection um, for planners. So this means um, you have your roadmap on on the computer and you can place obstacles um, beside the road and simulate it with um, different kinds of wind speeds and you can monitor how snow and other particles um, behave here around the road. So what are the application scenarios? Um, Road and railway infrastructure planners and managers may be interested in such kind of planning tool to identify hotspots in winter where plowing activities have to be focused to. And on the other side, which measures can we take to avoid um, plowing activities? Um, you can plug in real world weather information data and you get a a real-world uh, monitoring system for infrastructure. In virtual worlds and, and computer games um, we have 3D landscapes and 
environmental wind impacts haven't been modeled so far, as we know. So this approach with a neural network can be um, a good testing case um, for a computer simulation, uh, a virtual reality, where we can simulate um, environmental behavior. So the neural network is ready for test implementations in other systems and we would appreciate if you have any questions on that. Where we want to be in two or three years? Um, you have seen our virtual test scenario with estimated um, obstacle height. Um, a state of the art in, in GIS information technology is quite a step further. Um, on the upper right you see a digital surface model um, from Upper Austria. Uh, laser scannings, autophotographs have been used to generate a 3D model of the terrain, um, also mapping buildings and so on. On the right you see a, a filtered raw data set which is then the final digital terrain model. I've met Mr. Pflieger um, who is the head of GIS development at the Upper Austrian government, Land, Österreich, Land Oberösterreich, and he was so friendly to provide us um, these photographs to show um, where this um, model can be applied to. And so it's our goal um, to integrate advanced topologic surface models um, as a real world connection. We want to simulate more scenarios, including permeability of obstacles. Um, we want to generate a, a GIS database for managing the topographic and simulation data and where we can take out the data for neural network training. And we want to make a prototype system for planners so they can have a 3D model here, they can place some obstacles and can observe how uh, placing of obstacles um, um, has an impact on the position. This approach can also be applied um, to sand, so we are not limited to snowy regions. We can also use this uh, in, in sandy regions. So that's it. That's all. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, um, just uh, contact us directly. Um, we would like to thank the Austrian Institute of Technology, AIT, for the supporting dataset for first studies. Thank you.